Members of the company, this is your places call. Places, please. Places for the top of the podcast. Places, please. Get ready for a behind-the-scenes look at the glitz and not-so-glam of Broadway, education, and everyday life with Uncommon Sense. Join hosts Christopher Smith and Sharna Lopez as they bring you the best stories and shenanigans that seemingly prove how elusive common sense can really be. So take a little time for yourself to hang out with the dynamic duo Sharnifer. And no leaving early, because you might just miss that 11 o'clock number. Stand by music. Music. Go. Uncommon sense The eleven o'clock And we are Boy. I actually I actually like that better. Christopher gave me like a real legit like TV star count in with his hands today. Thank it's because you, you are a TV star, Sharna. Well, Sharna thanks. Lopez. Thanks. I almost said Sharnifer. I was like, well, that's not gonna that's Sharnifer. not the same thing. That's both of us. I know. But. I was um I was on the news a few weeks ago, for those of you who don't know, and it took me back to my yes, you were. to my news my newscasting days. I really enjoyed it. I actually thought for a minute, like, oh, maybe I would have liked doing this. I don't know. I had like a little maybe like life moment, you know, because I didn't pursue that career. But all good. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome. Hello. You can't see me if you're listening, but I'm wearing a um, my Christmas sweater, and I've got Christmas oh. earrings on too. Christopher, can you see? I can't because you're a little blurry today, but but oh. I love it. I love there it. There are Christmas trees. I'm in the Christmas spirit. I Except am not it's in 80 the Christmas degrees. spirit. Right, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> Christmas time in SoCal. California Christmas for sure. Right. So um, I'm wearing my oh. best of Broadway shirt. <clears throat> so Christopher and I did a little show last year with Maddie called Best of Broadway that was really fun. A little review with our students. It was so fun. Yeah, it really was. And, I like those shows. And I I uh, wore it today kind of because of what I was planning on talking about. Which is what, was <laughs> Was basically like flops that have come back to be successes. So they were a flop when they first came on the scene and then they come back in a revival later like on the Broadway and on the Broadway. Yes. I like it. And their successes. So, yeah. So, so what, which one are we going to start with? Well, kind of like the big one that I found and like ran across that I was like, Oh, we should talk about this idea is merrily. We roll along. It okay. only ran. Do you know how many performances it ran when it first went okay so before you answer before you answer for uh, anyone who doesn't know do not speak. we roll along <laughs> don't interrupt you can see me you're like don't, don't, don't say anything <laughs> for those who don't know merrily we roll along um it's written by stephen sondheim and it was he had had numerous successes before this one and then this one came on the scene and it was a real flop like a real flop um because so yeah, how many performances how many did it run can you guess? I I think I already know. Oh, okay. So watch me I, get it wrong. I, I... It ran for only sixteen performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. So if you think about that, if they're still like I don't know, that was in the eighties, right? I'm assuming they still did eight shows uh, a yeah, week. That's two. Nineteen eighty one. Yeah. That's two yeah. weeks of shows. Can you imagine putting together? a show writing mm -hmm. it like i can't even imagine being a writer of it it's one uh, i to produce it and direct it and all the stuff but like writing something and putting your blood sweat and tears into it and then 16 performances yeah wow. especially after having numerous other hits right and that must have been just well because he also worked Stephen and hal prince this was their sixth collaboration 
Like they had already had five previous shows together. Right. So it's so, so I'm thinking a couple of things happened. I think the main thing that happened is audiences weren't ready for it. Okay. The the audience in 1981 wasn't ready for this story necessarily. Maybe Hmm. they didn't. Interesting. Maybe they didn't know how to like, because I mean, it was the, the story is told backwards, right? Yes. Which reminds me of the last five years. Yes. And I bet that's Which what inspired I, that. I think that that I remember when I figured that out, like I had not, I have still haven't seen it on stage, but I remember. <gasps> you still haven't seen it? No, I could sing the entire show. We could just do the show. Yeah, you're going to direct it. I'm going to music direct it and play it. it. I, I played that album out and I remember when I f- realized what was happening, I was like, this is genius. So creative. I yeah. love the idea. And I, d- I don't know anything about Mary Lee We Roll Along other than it's told in that fashion. Uh, obviously, last five years, it's got the two characters and they're going in the, yes. in the middle. The middle. I love that. But with this one, telling it backward, I, maybe you're right. Maybe audiences were kind of like, wait, what? This is not a traditional in your face right. da, 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 musical. And it has a little bit of something different to it. I think it's very unique. Well, I, that's why I love things. But many times, unique groundbreaking things are not the first groundbreaking thing is not really the successful one. Yeah. Right. Like it yeah. pops that bubble and everyone's like, ew, what, right? what's happening? And then yeah. it ha- like, then more things are like it and you get accustomed to it and you're like, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, that, that makes I, me happy though, that it was revived, you know? Yes. Um, just recently. 40, 40 years later. That's what we were looking 42. at. 42. 40 years. 42, 42 years, years later. later. And I think too, I was reading, uh, Christopher sent me an article as he does, because you know, that's how he rolls. Um, it was talking <laughs> as about- As we merrily roll along. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know a single song from the show. I feel like I'm going to listen to it on my way in to work today. There's um, some beautiful music in it. Really? Yeah. I-, I think it talks about kind of the financial world in 81 and how there was a lot like- of drama surrounding just the challenges like that they were facing Mm -hmm. in the theater world. So, you know, it, it probably, again, if a show didn't just like wham, make a bunch of money right out of those, the gate in the first two weeks is probably like, like, yeah, yeah. We got to get something else in here. That's going to make money. Right. Yeah. Which I mean, makes sense. It's a business as much as it is an art, you know, and I, and I think, um, I, I also think I would have loved to be like part of the original one or, or kn- know more about it. And then this revival and see actually mm. what was different. Now, one of the big things in that little article you sent me was the re- revisions to the script. Yes. Yes. There was yeah. so many, I don't know exactly how many, but there was a lot. <laughs> and, and I actually think that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. I, I like this idea of like, we can grow, we can take feedback, mm-hmm. we can revise and workshop. And I know they, obviously they still do that now, but. Um, yeah. But also the world is a very different place now than it was 42 years ago. As we know, because we've lived those 41 years. Yeah. Cheers, 30, 30, 11. Cheers to 30, 11. We're almost, we're almost as old as merrily we roll along. I'm, I'm like, want to listen um, to the music now. I'm going to go listen to it. Yeah. Do you know the song Our Time? Uh, no. Ba-dum, da-da-da, da-da-dum, dun. Nope. But okay, I'm going to go listen to it now. You best believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will. So when it came back, it played. So first of all, it starred Jonathan Groff, Daniel Radcliffe. and This revival. The revival, yeah. Yeah, the revival. Mm-hmm. Lindsay Mendez, Tony Award winner. Um, from our school. From our school. And I got to meet and play with, play with, play for at Scott's wedding. Oh, at Scott's wedding. Mm hmm. Because yeah. I hadn't met her before. And she sings. She with seems Krista. like such a doll. I don't, I don't know her, but she seems like a genuine, real, down to earth yeah. person. Yeah. Green. And her voice is so, magical. Meh. Cool. Yeah. So when it opened, it played to, and this is kind of shocking, 100% capacity. like On its opening not, night. 
Uh huh. Wow. And it's still playing to 100% capacity, I think is what this is saying. Guess, guess how much gross it makes each week. With the 100% like, capacity, just like at, if they sell How much tickets. money is, just guess how much money they're making every week. Uh, $300,000. $1.8 million each week. What? That, that's profit yeah. or that's just that's the gross so that just means that's how much money they're bringing in okay so then now, they've got after pay everybody the gets actors, paid who knows they've got to pay now here's something really interesting mm -hmm. i think if you can get a sold out house are, are you kidding me the numbers like it's not like you're doing i don't know pippin or 42nd street or something where you have right. to pay 20 performers of course then you're going to make a bigger profit if you can sell the house yeah yeah dang dang and i wonder what the production like is it a big it doesn't seem from the pictures i've seen super crazy scenic it seems kind of maybe yeah more i agree i don't know side. much i don't know too much about that aspect but i agree that it doesn't look huge and that is a sorry and that is a far cry from the <laughs> financial failure that it was in 1981 and it now granted we're in a different time financially as well with inflation and everything else but um the 80s weren't great for inflation either yeah it grossed 137,000 in its first week so Oof. from 137,000 to 1.8 million 8 million now yeah. i know we talked about this uh this topic with Tyler when Tyler was on yes. about getting certain names named people yes. into shows. I find this show, I don't know any three it's so uh Jonathan Groff, Daniel Radcliffe and Lindsay Mendes, right? I don't know any of them yep. personally. But I will say I find like maybe this is like the money spot for doing something like this because Yeah. Jonathan Groff, I mean He's got, it's not like he was like a oh, one yeah. hit wonder movie star and they're bringing him no. in. I mean, he has done a lot of stuff. Lindsay yeah. Mendez, lots of Broadway credits, lots of clout. Yeah. And Daniel Radcliffe, although yes, he's Harry Potter, which is why he's done, most he's people been know doing him. Stuff. Yeah. He has been, I, I, he's done a lot of stuff. And yeah. a couple of the things, um, when I directed How to Succeed several years ago and I was doing some research, um, they had just revived, uh, how to succeed with him on Broadway. Mm. And I remember being like, what? Like, okay. I, I actually really like okay, Harry Potter. Pitch. Wave that magic yeah. wand. I mean, he was really great. So I think like, yes, th those are big names. I mean, Jonathan Groff, especially since frozen and um, Hamilton. Yeah. He's gotten a, a like that name, but I, I mean, they hold their own. And I think that maybe yeah, yeah, that's yeah. part of it too. So they've got these names. Oh, to get 100%. people in the seats, but they definitely, you know, they should deliver. be there. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Jonathan Groff's first big thing was Spring Awakening. Yes. Like, that was uh, uh, his, I mean, like, like that's was got, he in what something got him before that? Map? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he was in something. I'm, uh, I'm but sure that was he, his, but like, I, I think that was his thing. first Broadway thing, though. Yeah, I, I love think. his voice. I could listen to him sing... Hamilton, his song in Hamilton. I actually, okay. So, uh oh, here, here we go. I, I'm a, mm, I'm a Hamilton fan. I, I want, I am. I, I could probably sing the head? entire album. I don't know if that's what they call them, but I'm gonna call you. <gasps> Would a you call head. me a hamhead? <laughs> I don't think that's the right thing. A hamhead. I'm a ham fan. I'm gonna get it. A hamhead. Um, but I was. <laughs> very late to the game to see it on stage. So Same. I, it was one of those where I had listened to it and listened to it and listened to it. I, I love Lin-Manuel's creativity. I love the themes of the music throughout. Like, oh, you yeah. know, we've talked about this before, Christopher. I, yeah, that's why I just closed into the woods. And that's one of my favorite things about that show is the thematic music that filters into other songs. And I, and I, I really do love it. Um, I remember when the movie came out or not movie but the the filmed broadway version right right and everyone had just been like hamilton's amazing it's a like everyone was on 20 about this show mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's because i saw it on the tv first 
before seeing it on stage, but I was kind of like, okay, like, okay. Uh Like I wasn't, I was ready to be completely blown away, (laughs) blow them all away. And I was not, I was just kind of like, yeah, cool. Like it was, it was good. No, no, like criticism, but I wasn't, my mind was not blown. Like the first time I saw some other shows. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. And then I saw it on stage and I was a little more like, okay, because when you're in person and you get that feeling and yeah. the vibe a little bit more and you can see the transitions and the turntable. When you're in the room where there. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite song on the whole show. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I wasn't – anyway, I just tangent, tangented. Tan- mm-hmm. How do you do the past – tangented? I think it – yeah, I think it's no. tangented. We're going to make it tangented. I just went on a tangent. Let's just do that. Yes, I I went down a tangent. Um, But Jonathan Groff's, well, King George's character in that show, I think is one of the best, most well-written, like, if you see it, if you've seen it, he is a completely different color motif, his costume. He has different lighting. He's by himself. The Mm -hmm. way they've shot it, I love, 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 love the way they wrote him into the show and just, like, the complete shift of energy and change and he i think is so freaking funny in that i he is I so, he's funny. so funny he's so funny and it's like what a cush role no offense jonathan groth or whoever else has played jonathan groth <laughs> king george. or whoever else has played king george but like what you just get to come out and look fancy and sing your song and nail it and then go sit back down and then maybe come out again yeah. a little bit later like that is a money role that is a money yeah. role Love it. I love I w- it. Now I want to see him in Mary Lee roll along. Right? I will say, though, I know we're not talking about Hamilton, but I'm going to talk about it for a moment. The, I was also not blown away, although I had some moments that I was like, what? First of all, I love the double um, rotating Turn stage. Yeah. Turntables. Love that. Um, watching that being coy, I was like, How? Like I don't have a choreographer brain per se. I can appre- like I can I can see it, I can help, I can tweak, but I cannot necessarily create like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how did you like conceive of this and make it like figure out how right. to make all the moving pieces work in yeah. time with a rotating double rotating stage? It's magical. And yeah. one thing too, talking about the choreography, I think it was not the first show, but a show for me that sits in my mind uh, that really nailed using the ensemble, like using Mm -hmm. them for everything, like constantly in things, constantly giving that like energy on the side or in the back or whatever. And I really loved that. Like there, a cool experiment would be like removing them from some Mm -hmm. of these scenes that you don't even really know they're in and then realizing how much they're needed. Um, And another thing that I was really appreciative of was, man, we started to get into this era and we're still kind of there of like the interface projection and all this projection and, Mm. and digital. And I felt like the Hamilton set, I love the scenic design for Hamilton. I think it's really well done. And it kind of, uh, I don't want to use the word minimalistic because it's not, that it's very intricate, Mm -hmm. but feels not so much in your face. See, this is what we do on this uh, podcast, Charno fans. We just tangent, and now we are literally like right. in the weeds of Hamilton. <laughs> okay, back so to flops Mary Lee Roll Along. This is now flops and <laughs> hips. Uh, yes, Mary Lee Roll Along and flops. So, yeah, so that one. And then there's some other um, shows that have followed that sort of path, maybe not as dramatically, but even Tell like me. Chicago was really? much. Really? Yeah, it was not, it was kind of a flop when it started, not like a flop flop, not like that, but it was, it did not do great when it first came out. I could see that though. Chicago is, um, it is not, even when I went to New York, uh, Ruby was like six months old. So we're talking eight years ago. Uh, Mm -hmm. and I took some friends and I have a friend in Chicago on Broadway and I was like, my friends want to come see the show. They're dancers. Um, and they liked it, but I think they were like, it's very just like stark. It's very like they they mm. they like a, like a musical theater person. I think that show you you have to kind of know what you're getting into as well, right? 
I could see mm-hmm. that maybe. When did Chicago first hit Broadway? We don't know. I think it was 75. I and it's, see that and let's put it this way. It's not that it it's not that it was a flop. It just did much better in the revival. Sure. I can see that. I think it ran for like two years. Because I think it ran for like two years, which is not nothing. But But it also, yeah. It's like it's. I think it's the second. I think it's the second longest running behind Phantom. And now, if it runs long enough, it'll surpass it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I I mean, I could watch Chicago a million times. I love it. Oh, well, as we know, thing. I don't know if I could, because now that I've seen. I've seen it a couple times and I loved it the first time I saw it on tour, but this last time I saw it, I was not, we talked about this. I was not impressed. That's right. Here's one thing I think too, Christopher, where did you see it at Seagerstrom? Yeah. But I saw Seagerstrom last time and I liked it. And you liked it? Mm Because for me, Chicago is really about the venue. I want to feel closer and intimate and have like a, you know, I don't know. I think that makes a huge difference. It needs to feel like the Kit Kat club, even though that's cabaret. Yeah, no, but That's yeah, exactly like. the same kind of thing, right? But which is another one that kind of was better as a revival. I yeah. also oh, yeah. love that show. It's the lo- it's the second longest running production in Broadway history behind yeah. Phantom. Yeah, Look at you knowing your stuff. What else is um, on that list? Well, also, I wanted to say one more thing about that is part of the reason it was not as successful is because it seemed it came out at the same time as Chorus Line, which swept the Tonys and everything else. Yeah. So it was overshadowed. Gosh, chorus line. Come Which, on, a chorus line. I would love to see. Okay. Did we already talk about this? I don't My know. My idea of like a revival of a chorus line. I don't know did if we, we did. Tell me again. Okay. Sorry, Sharna fans, if we're repeating. I think they need to do a modernized version. I, I think copying this idea of interviewing the people, mm-hmm. like that's how chorus line was created. Yeah. Right. Have you, have you seen? Okay. Um, I've done the show. Amazing. I've never done it, but I've seen the documentary um, and I've seen the show a million times, but I I think doing it again, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how they could make it as organic, right? Because it just came out of nothing. Like they weren't originally trying to like write this big show. It was more like, let's get some interviews, see what we can do. But I think it would be really cool to take a modern look on it and, and interview people now, right? So like the interviews that were back from the seventies, right? Seventies, right. Um, Mm -hmm. they would be so different now and the challenges that people face now and what they're looking at, you know, I I just think it would be a really cool and don't change, don't change scenery. Don't give me projection, still stand on the line, but modernized interviews and characters based off of real people in the industry. Yeah. I like that. I think it would be so cool. Be great. Somebody, somebody do that for me, please. Thank you. (laughs) 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 Iconic. Yeah. All you have to, there's a couple of themes from there. All you have to do is play like one measure or two measures. (laughs) 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 So funny. Okay. So the other day, I got to tell this story real quickly because you being my musical friend and fan, we had auditions last week for my next show at OSHA. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's certain songs that are very popular right now among teenagers for musical theater. And my daughter being a a musical theater fan, she listens to a lot of those songs too, uh, over and over and over again in my car. And so a a kid got up to sing and they hadn't done their slate yet. And we were just doing a sound check. Like they were going to check the music and it literally Uh played one chord. It was like, Bung. And then I just started singing. I was like, mama, I could use some help here. They're like, what the what? I'm like, you guys, I got an eight-year-old theater fan. So like, they're like, how do you know that? I'm like, one chord. It just was like, bing, from Beetlejuice. It was very, Sharna, very funny. we need, you know what we need to do? We need to find a game show that is Name That Tune Broadway. And we need to go on that uh, game show and win all the money. They would disqualify us. They would not even let us go on it. They would be like, you guys, absolutely not. You're going to take all of our money. Are you kidding right. me? We would crush it. Crush it. Oh, Can man. we just play it we on here? Do that. We could play it on here. So we need to. We, could, we, need we could play to... it on here. Yes. Better yet. We'll get a sh- no. What? What? Better yet. We do it like maybe we do it as a thing at school. Like we 
do it in Symphony Hall. And we have people come watch us do a live. We'll videotape oh it and then we'll put it on our podcast. I feel the like pressure's on. <laughs> I would be really excited about that. We'll get sponsors. Yes. <gasps> oh my gosh, we're gonna make that happen. I'm so excited. I feel like I just want to play the game right now. Next episode is gonna be the shortened version of Sharna and Christopher. Uh, Name that Broadway tune. We could do a bonus uh, episode. Oh, wait, that could okay. Be so fun. I'm being so serious, Christopher. I know you are. What if we each come back next episode with ten songs? And we're going to okay. just play, like, I have 10 for you and you have 10 for me. And we'll okay. go back and forth. And I'll play, like, a little bit. And then you have to guess. And then what do you, what do you think? Okay. Yeah. 10 What ten if songs. I'm terrible at it now? What if, what if That's I, okay. after all I of this, love you. I'll be I like, still love you. Meh. It's entertainment. You zero out of 10. <laughs> it's entertainment. No, I'm not going to try and trick you. Like, I want to do ones that, like, you know, it, it, yeah. it shows that you know the music. Right. I love it. I think it'd be fun. Here's the thing. I feel like we should take, put rules on like no Sondheim or not no Sondheim because, but so many of his stuff sounds exactly the same. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what show. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. I could, we could put some parameters, guidelines in place. I'm not some trying to. guidelines. Make you look Oh my cool. gosh. Could be, otherwise it'll just be a horror show of me not getting anything at all. Correct. I think, I think you'd do well. Speaking of horror shows, the Rocky oh. Horror Show. Okay, transition. Okay, transition. Was, was also one of those. And it's not it's not that it was a financial success either time it was on, but um, the 2000 revival at Circle in the Square ran for far longer than the original. Do you like that show? So I mm, like is a strong word. I have done the show. That's actually how I met Jeff Paul. And yeah, ended up at I saw that show. Yeah. So I didn't know the show before then. I had seen the movie and I'm like, meh. And then I had fun doing the show, but I don't, I'm not like the cult following for that show. I, I you and I, that's why we're friends. Cause I, I have this relationship. I don't have a relationship with the show. What am I talking about? Reverse. I want to like that show. <laughs> beep, beep, <laughs> I have a relationship beep, beep, with Rocky Horror Picture Show. Up. I, it's been a show. I remember seeing it in college and being like, why don't I like this? Like everybody else. Why am I not? Right. Am I missing something? It's like when you, when someone mentions like a really awesome movie they've seen and you see it and you're like, I, uh, I'm not understanding it or I don't get what you see. That's how I feel about it. Not that I wouldn't, I've seen it twice. Yeah. Um, I, I, and it's entertaining. Oh. It has some funny moments, but I don't, I would never be like, I want to do Rocky horror. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't get it. I I think that like, cause I also had a similar experience cause I saw it my junior year, senior year in high school at a cast party. Oh. That's what they were like. We went to, we went to like um, a cast party after the closing of our show. I don't remember what year it was. So I don't remember what show it was, but <laughs> they, at the cast party, they were, they decided that they wanted to watch Rocky Horror. Okay. And I was like, okay, I don't know what the this movie? is. The movie? Yeah. Okay. The movie. And I was like, what is this? I don't even, I had barely even heard of it at that point. And I was like, what is this weirdness? I can't with like all the shenanigans. And then yeah. Tim Curry comes on the screen and I'm like, what? Who, what is this? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. It, I don't, I, I think you have but, to, it does have a cult following for sure. Yes. And I think with that cult following, it also falls under the category of, which I mean, in certain respects, Hamilton and other huge hits fall into the same category of like, once certain people are obsessed with it, then everybody feels like they need to be obsessed with it. And yeah. if they're not, there's something wrong with you. And well, even in high school, that's what it was. Um, Dear Evan Hansen. So mm. when Dear Evan Hansen came out, my students were so, 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 so obsessed. And yeah, there, there are some songs in there that I actually really like. Um, I think Waving Through Windows is a great song. But mm -hmm. I, I, everyone can be upset with me. It's not one of my favorite shows. And I remember a couple of students went to go see it in New York. And they were just, I cried. And I, I would see it 20 more times. And then when I finally saw it, I was like, okay, okay uh, I don't ever need to see it again. I don't know. Like, I just, <laughs> I, li I like some of the songs, but I was not, I don't know. 
I mean, the kid that played I, I'm, the lead was so talented, but I was like, yeah, okay. I'm a little more in the middle. I am not in love with Dear Evan Hansen. I think that it does. I actually like most of the music quite a lot, but I'm a big Pasek and Paul fan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I like pretty much anything they write. It's very much up my alley as far as my, my style preferences. And so, yeah. You like you like the music. I, I have a, yeah. a question for you. What am I going to write in the description for this episode? Is it going to be <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be flops that are now hits tangenting Hamilton Christopher's opinion Sharna loves a game show? Like idea for guess that tune? What the heck is this is this episode? We're gonna call I'm, this um we're going to call Sharnifer. it a smorgasbord. Is that the one? That smorgasbord. Sharnifer talks, flops that become successes, and many other things. <laughs> and everything else. Oh, and everything Ra else. Yes. Rabbit holes. Rabbit holes? Yeah, we went down the rabbit hole. Oh, the rabbit um, hole. So, and the rabbit hole. Yep. The, the, the subsequent oh. rabbit holes. Okay, got it. That's going to be the title. Um, because I love that we, that, but like Sharna fans, just so you know, those of you who actually know us and listen to this, I know we have a lot of friends and family who listen, like this is no, no surprise to you because if you've spent no. any time with us anywhere, this is what happens. But fans who maybe have not met us or don't know us, welcome, welcome to a glimpse into if Sharna and Christopher are in any room together for any amount of time, <laughs> this is what happens with what the happens. conversation. <laughs> But also, I don't think at this point we need to explain ourselves to anybody because if they've been listening, we're on episode 40. I don't remember what episode this is. 40 something. <laughs> you guys should have seen Christopher's so, face. Episode 40. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so I think this was a really anyway, great representation us of us this episode, right? Maybe so that should be the title The Real Sharnifer. <laughs> oh man were there any other shows on the flop list that became uh, uh good ones before so, we have to sign off i really want <laughs> circling back circling, circling back. back i mean there were but there was nothing as dramatic so it's like for example like some of these were even considered successes the revivals were just more so like there was the one called oh calcutta which i don't know by the oh, way me either um but it was a hit in its original production and it ran for 1300 performances 1314 okay. apparently it's a nudie musical i don't know oh whoops. i did not know this maybe that's why i was so popular uh, maybe it ran for three years in 1969 and the 1976 so not long revival of the show exceeded that and ran for 13 years it ran it, for th in, where, in what year i've never even heard of that music 76 76 oh, and it ran for 13 years yeah. Wow. Well, we will not be doing it at OSHA or in any sort of youth theater. Right. It'll be in our community theater late night oh, series. <laughs> we'll do Rocky Horror. Maybe maybe we oh, can Calcutta. pull a number from it, though. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I maybe. I really love showcases where we can pull numbers from shows that the kids would never be able to do. You know? Right. I'll if there's good stuff. Give it a listen. And um, the revival of the show. This is a fun fact played more than the standard eight performances a week. I don't know how many, what? they don't say. Why? But it played that's, more than eight. That's too many. I guess I could probably do the math. It's a, which I'm not it's a do. lot. Like when I when I look at I don't know. So my sister obviously is still in this business. And you know, sometimes I'm like, oh lucky her. She gets to like sleep in. She doesn't have a show. To... When I remember how much energy especially certain shows, right? Like, yeah. holy moly. And doing that eight times a week, that is a lot for some of these people. And I know Broadway has gotten a lot better where, especially some of these very vocally demanding shows, mm -hmm. they will have somebody step in two shows yeah. a week or whatever to give the people a break. But it's a lot. How could you do more than eight shows a week? I guess they weren't dark at all. They either weren't dark or they put matinees on other days. Yowza. That's a lot. Right. We did six shows of Into the Woods at school, and I about fell <laughs> down the aisle melting. I was like, okay, this is a lot. This is a lot. Oh, man. I, and my kids are I, fabulous, but like, holy, that's a lot. 
Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is I'm like, I feel like because I get tired of shows after a while. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how do you do eight shows a week for years and 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 and years? Yeah. So that's one thing Um, Kelly talked about just getting like, yeah, not bored, but you're just like, wow, I've toured with this show. I just talked to um, one of my students who was touring. Same thing. She's like, I've really enjoyed this experience, but I got to I got to mix it up, man. (laughs) Yeah, because it is. It's like the repetitiveness of it. It's just insane. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, I know how they do it, but it's just like, it's a lot. It's just not probably for me for a long-term situation. And then Um, people, I love when people that aren't, what? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. Uh, I was just going to say, I love Classic Sharna. Not Not (laughs) classic. Maybe that's the title. Sharnifer talks classic Sharnifer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I just love when people are in the industry or that are not in the industry have things to say about people and what they should do in the industry. Meaning yeah, you don't know anything. Like, Sit down, quiet down. They get when people, I mean, we all get a little disappointed if you go to see somebody and it's a stand in, but you really wanted to see them. But at some point it's like, these are humans and yeah. they also have to function. Yeah. 100, 100%. On. And honestly, I've had that happen a couple times and the person that has gone on has been amazing. And I always like that too, yeah. where I'm like, let's go understudy yeah. or swing or whoever jumps in. Like you better work it. I love that. I have had situations where that's not the case, but. Oh, really? Then it, yeah. then it's. But it wasn't, it's not it's like it was bad. It was just like, oh, not the fine. person you wanted to see. I get it. Yeah. Um, what okay. were you going to say? I interrupted Question you. Question for you before we close out. Cause we're coming to the end of our episode uh, oh, we are. on the topic of shows that have been revived and have done really well. Is yeah. there a show or shows that you could think of that you'd love to see revived? Like a um, revival of, I mean, I already said a chorus line. I would love to see right. a re not a reimagined, but a modernized right. revival chorus of a chorus line. Um, Is there anything else that oh, you're like, a, I wish I love to see that, that you would have asked me this question before. So I could think about it off the I top have of one my that head. I no, nothing think comes you to know. mind. Nothing comes but to mind? Not, not right off the top of my head at this moment, other than, like, I, back to the last five years, I, I have done the last five years, I have seen the last five years, I've seen the last five years twice, I think, and one of the productions I saw was maybe my problem that I had with Chicago is it wasn't the right venue. It was too big, it was mm-hmm. on a huge stage, they did some cool stuff with it, but I would almost like to see that when somehow restaged mm-hmm. like that show like rethink how the whole show is visually put together but anyway it doesn't quite count but. i like that i um i don't know i don't have my information correct did they do a revival of the secret garden or was it like a tour because i know it came through LA. so yeah so i think I don't know what is technically considered because it was reimagined. Like they changed things. It wasn't I, like. I would love to see that. I know. But it wasn't. Good. I missed it. And I knew people in it and I just didn't get to go. And I was very sad oh. because I love Secret Garden. The other one that I want to see revived and revised, and I think it's in the works, is Millie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They need to change that script. And I think. I think rumor i heard from xyz people that it is happening rumor has but it. i feel like that could be a really fun yeah a really fun one yeah millie okay great that has okay. fun music yeah and tap dance ah stop kicking the and microphone funny and funny characters too i like that yeah show. totally all right christopher all right sharna fans sharno nice, fans nice Welcome to our catch-all episode, apparently. Our tangent episode. Thank you for we listening off in on such to a good track. all the things. Thank you for listening. Um, so, anyway, yes, thank you for listening. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow or subscribe or whatever your podcast platform calls it so that you don't miss new episodes. Follow us on Instagram at Sharnifer Official. And if you have any questions, check us out at uncommonpod.com or if you just want to get some merch. And on that note, 
Shinefer out. Boom, boom, boom. Woo, woo. All right, the episode <laughs> of everything. It's what did you say? Episode. I gotta, it's I gotta like remember everything that. Everything bagel. The everything bagel. The everything bagel episode that started out as a, this episode and just got but, better. But then we didn't talk about bagels, so it. we'll have to think Dude, about it. Dude, I used to eat everything bagels with cream cheese. Yeah. This concludes another episode of Uncommon Sense. If you're ready for more of this fresh, hilarious, and unique perspective on the world of entertainment, education, and life, be sure to subscribe right now to catch every episode. If you gasped, laughed out loud, or even snorted, share the show with your friends and aspiring entertainers, because, let's be real, sharing is caring. For more Sharnifer, tune in to their witty insights by checking out the website uncommonpod.com or connecting on social media. Tune in next week and get the real insider scoop on another episode of Uncommon Sense. <laughs>